Tonight, the U.S. threatened Yahoo with massive fines. We'll tell you why. Chinese iPhone workers go on strike. And more leaked screenshots of Windows 9. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 170 for Thursday, September 11th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. According to about 1,500 pages of court documents that were unsealed today, back in 2008, the U.S. government threatened to fine Yahoo $250,000 per day if it failed to comply with the demand to hand over user data, even though the company found the demand unconstitutional. It also sheds more light on why American companies participated in the National Security Agency's PRISM program, which gave the NSA access to records of online communications of U.S.-based tech firms. The documents also detail Yahoo's secret legal battle to resist the government demands, first by challenging the order on constitutional grounds, then at the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court and an appeals court, the Foreign Intelligence Court of Review, but lost each time. And thus, Yahoo became one of the first companies to begin providing information to PRISM. The program was discontinued in 2011 and first revealed by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden last year. Back at Google's I.O. conference in June, the company announced plans to add support for running Android apps on Chromebooks. And today, the first Android apps to run on Chrome OS are now available to download. Duolingo's language learning app, Evernote, Vine, and an app called SightWords, which improves children's reading skills, are the lucky first four. But Google says it's working with, quote, a select group of Android developers to add more of your favorite apps. So it sounds like more are on the way. Bringing Android apps to Chromebooks is obviously important for Google as it looks to convert many millions of Android users into potential Chromebook users as well. Verizon CEO Lowell McAdam spoke today at Goldman Sachs Communicopia Conference, which is really a conference, it's very clever, about Verizon's plan to offer a TV-like service over the internet by mid-2015. McAdam claims that the service will offer mobile users a bundle with major broadcast providers plus a collection of custom channels, including DreamWorks's anima DreamWorks Animation's Awesomeness TV that McAdam says really goes after the millennials. He also noted that Verizon Wireless offers fast speeds for those who want to upload content and acknowledged that the face of cable TV is changing and that the days of pay TV bundles are numbered and that, quote, no one wants to have 300 channels on your wireless. Everybody understands that it will go a la carte. The question is, what does that transition look like? Well, at least they're paying attention to what people want. Workers at the Dongguan Wintec plant in China that make screens for the new iPhone 6 went on strike after they said they were denied promised moon cakes and a $98 bonus. Employee Kai Shen told reporters, quote, there are 10,000 of us in that factory, so when we stop work, nobody anywhere in the world gets their screens. They promised us more money and mooncakes, and we got neither. A factory spokesman, Dong Tang, told reporters that the failure to deliver the cakes, plus that bonus, was due to a miscommunication. The demonstrations lasted four hours, then the workers agreed to return to the job. By the way, I know you're wondering, mooncakes are a delicacy in China that are eaten during the holidays to celebrate the harvest moon, and the workers were promised them after they were asked to work on a holiday. It's important stuff. Less than positive news for your local Radio Shack. The company announced today that it may need to file for bankruptcy protection if its cash flow doesn't improve after reporting its 10th straight quarterly loss. Radio Shack... <laughs> Radio Shack. No, that was just a that was a Freudian slip. Radio Shack said that it was also exploring new options, including a sale or an investment or a liquidation, and described in a regulatory filing that it was working with lenders and landlords to restructure its debt and caught cost cuts. Same store sales declined twenty percent in the latest quarter, while total sales sat at their lowest in over twenty years. Not good. Sorry, Radio Shack. Grew up on that. 
Kind of sad, right? Coming up, some people aren't really all that happy about U2's new album. We will tell you why. And up next, I'll chat with Mike Rougeau from Tech Radar about what he's learned from leaked screenshots from Windows 9. But first, let's talk about personal capital. It's a free and it's a secure tool that solves the problem that you have about not getting richer. You want to grow your wealth, right? Well, you have to be really organized. You got to be on top of your stocks and your 401k and your bank accounts. Those are all in different places and you might have different usernames and oh, how do I, what, what is it? Go? It's very complicated. So you pay somebody to manage your money. You're paying them too much because you have personal capital as an option, which brings all of your accounts and assets onto a single screen on your computer, on your phone, on your tablet with real time and intuitive graphs. Personal Capital even has a watch app you can download in the Google Play Store that integrates with Personal Capital on Android devices for all you Android users and gives users timely updates on their finances wherever, whenever they need them. Personal Capital shows you what you're overpaying, helps you reduce those fees that you might be paying. You might even not know it. There are a lot of monthly fees out there. You can also get tailored advice on optimizing your particular investment depending on who you are and what your money situation is. Signing up takes just a minute. It'll pay you back in big dividends. Personal Capital gives you clarity and transparency and you can make better investment decisions right away. And who doesn't want that? To sign up for your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. It's free and it's smart. We thank Personal Capital for the support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Mike Rougeau, writer over at Tech Radar. Hello, Mike. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really good. So I mentioned uh, before the break that uh, you uh, have, uh, have gotten your hands on some Windows 9 screenshots that were leaked that this is this is really you know it's it's a leak that that gives us a better sense of what the next version of the Windows desktop is going to look like. Now it's been called Threshold, otherwise known as Windows Nine. So what are some of the features that stood out to you? Yeah, this is the important thing to note with these screenshots is that um, these are clearly in progress, and and this may or may not be uh, similar to the look that they ultimately launch with uh, when they launch. Uh, next year, which is what the rumors currently say. Um, but what it does give us a look at is some of the features that they are, are testing out. And uh, the reports say that that they currently are deciding what features are going to roll out in the in the previews when the previews do go public. So one of the big ones, uh, which we're looking at right now, is having the modern style uh, touchscreen focused uh, apps uh, run windowed in the desktop environment. And that's that's something that's, it's important because right now, uh, Windows 8 feels like a very, like it has a, a split personality. Mm -hmm. uh, and these these two sides of the operating system, uh, not only do they feel so different, but there's not a lot of interaction between the two sides. So they feel very separate. Um, and by having those apps come over into the desktop environment and be able to use them uh, windowed, you can have them uh, next to each other, makes multitasking easier, should just improve workflow in general, that's a big one. What about the idea mm -hmm. of unifying the Windows mobile experience more with the desktop experience? Is that, does this, do these screenshots point to that? Yeah, I think, I think that they do. Um, the big news yesterday uh, that I believe you guys covered was uh, that the Microsoft internal document leaked that showed that for their holiday uh, promotions, et cetera, the, the language that they're using, they're not using De-emphasizing Windows, Windows Phone, right. yeah, and yeah, using so the Windows, using the regular Windows. Windows logo. Right, so it just becomes Windows, uh, you know, for your phone. Um, and and I think, I think uh, bringing the windowed apps over to work on the desktop is a big part of that because then uh, now you have the modern, which is what they call this UI style. So now you have the modern apps working on the desktop PCs, even if it's not a, a touch screen um, and, and now you have a more unified app ecosystem where an app that's developed for Windows Phone, because they will still be using Windows Phone, they just won't call it that. So an app that's developed for Windows Phone, uh, it, it'll be the exact same app, whether you're on a phone or on a tablet or on your desktop. And those apps will work directly in the desktop environment. And that, that's, that's, a, that's important. So I think that that's, uh, yeah, I, I feel like they're still working towards that for sure. How much damage control do you think 
Microsoft needs to do, at least with some of the, you know, legacy Windows users who really did not understand Windows 8. And like you said, it kind of had that split personality. With Windows 9, if it works more seamlessly, that's great. But have they lost people at this point where, you know, there's touch on, you know, a, a, a desktop of some kind or on a laptop and then you've got the mobile version and you can go back and forth. I know for, for many folks, it was just too much. Oh yeah, they they definitely um, they have some fans to win back, and they definitely have a lot of work to do to do that. Um, wh one of the indications that they they're aware of that one of the big steps was when they went from Windows eight to Windows eight point one uh, some months ago, and they brought the start menu back. They made a number of changes that uh, that people had been sort of clamoring for after the the jarring transition from Windows seven. To Windows 8, and it, it seems like the the start menu is is getting redesigned again. Um, uh, in the screenshots, also we're seeing uh, some virtual desktop type features. Um, you know, to make the uh, to make the UI uh, better for multitasking, and, and uh, it seems like they really want to win those users back. Um, I'm not sure where those users have gone. I think that they just sort of sit there. <laughs> They're just but sitting they, there they confused. Still I mean, it's more confused no than they used to be. Yeah. Right. It's no secret that, that Windows 8 adoption is not where they would like it to be. Um, I guess people can go to Linux if they want, but most people are just still on Windows 7. And if Windows 9 continues, the people who care and who haven't upgraded yet because they, they prefer Windows 7, those are the people who pay attention. And if Microsoft is... If they're, if they're making an effort and every time new screenshots leak or every time there's another uh, rumor from some inside source, it, it seems like they are moving in that direction. Those people will notice. And, and yeah, I could see I could see adoption going back up. People don't want to switch off of Windows because they're already using it and uh, they're used to it. So if, if Windows does the things they want it to do, then yeah, they'll upgrade. All right. So we've got some leaked screenshots. Microsoft has an event scheduled for September 30th. So it's just a couple of weeks from today. Mm -hmm. Do you assume that's when we're going to get the official rollout of what we can expect from Windows Nine? Yeah, I, I, th I that's that's what the that's what the rumors say, and uh, not sure what else they they would be talking about there. That's what everybody wants to hear, and it's it's been some time. Um, I'm expecting a somewhat more major overhaul than what these screenshots seem to indicate. Um, for example, the just the aesthetic that they're using, the, the uh, wallpaper, and, and even if you can see the recycle bin in some of the images, and that doesn't look like something that they would ship with in 2015. So I'm expecting that uh, they're, they've got some work to do still, and, and I am expecting to see that debut in a couple of weeks. That said, I'm not sure whether they'll go with Windows 9 as a name, frankly. So Maybe we won't see Back Windows to threshold, 9. threshold, or do you have Not another threshold. idea? <laughs> maybe they'll just maybe they'll just uh, call it Windows. Windows. Yeah, I don't. Know. Yeah. Well, but, uh, all right. I, I think we'll see that. We'll uh, we'll 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 go ahead and and say prediction. Mike Rougeau, writer at Tech Radar, <laughs> says it'll just simply be Windows. Let's let's simplify this, which actually could work for the company. Thanks so much, Mike, for joining us on TN2 today, and let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Oh yeah, I write. I write on Tech Radar. I write for a number of different sites. Uh, I am a freelancer. The best place is on Twitter at Rogue Chatter. You can see it right down there. I love it. Good Twitter name. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. All right. Finally, on stage at Apple's event back on Tuesday, way back on Tuesday. Remember Tuesday? Tim Cook and U2 frontman Bono. You've probably heard of them. Said that anybody could download the band's new album, which is called Songs of Innocence, for free on iTunes. Great if you're a U2 fan. If not, whatever. It appears, though, that Apple attached the album to all iTunes accounts by default, even for those of us who might not be interested. And for users who have automatic music downloads enabled on their iPhones, might have even downloaded to those iPhones without the users knowing. Now, Ars Technica notes that this is an easy fix on your computer. You just pull up the album and album view and you right click on it and you hit delete. In iOS, though, it's more complicated. You have to go into your music settings and then toggle off show all music to hide anything attached to your iTunes account that you already haven't downloaded to your device, but then it might not remove the songs from your shuffle rotation. What in the world? So in other words, 
Hope you really like you too, everybody, because you're getting it. And even if you don't, well, we all know that Apple knows what's best for us. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can su subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. I don't know what's wrong with my voice today. And write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, Tech News Today, 1 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. Until then, I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.